My name is Adrian Ionel. I'm the uh, CEO and chairman of Murantis. Um, I'm looking forward to an interesting conversation today. Um, I have here some, some colleagues from our team. So, uh, Vijay, if you want to introduce uh, yourself, please. Yes, uh, I'm Vijay Raghavan. I'm a senior director that came to Marantis from the uh, Docker Enterprise team, with the Docker Enterprise team. Um, I lead up a few engineering teams uh, working on core uh, Docker Enterprise uh, product features and uh, technologies. Uh, looking forward to this, uh, the future with uh, Marantis. It's going to be a, an exciting one. All right, terrific. And do we have Kent as well? Yes. Hi, Thank Adrian. you. Self? Yes. Hi, this is Kent Lamb. I am responsible for enterprise customer support. I came over to Marantis uh, from Docker as well. All right. Uh, fantastic. All right. So let us get started um, perhaps with a an explanation of why we did what we did and what we, um, why we feel this is exciting, uh, is exciting for the Mirandis customers, for the Doc Enterprise customers, and, and for our partners as well, and for our company and all of our employees overall. So we did this for a number of reasons. One is um, we, we saw a, a shared opportunity. Um, there are three very big trends that we see unfolding uh, in enterprise computing and software development today. One is we feel that the world is very much moving towards a service-oriented or microservices architecture where the, the modern way of building applications today is by wiring together services from a variety of sources and providers that are lightly coupled and just building code and applications on top. And that's very, very different from the traditional way of building um, applications in the past. The second very big trend that we see happening in the world today is that enterprises are finding it more and more difficult to attract and retain uh, deep technical talent, especially talent with cloud native expertise, both cloud native operations expertise and the cloud native software development expertise. So anything that we can do to help customers better leverage the expertise they have and focus on the things that will make a difference from their business and really move the needle is very val valuable. And the third thing that we see unfolding in, in our space today is that the first wave of public cloud adoption is, is behind us. So now enterprises have become much more mature and much more experienced in how they use public cloud services and um, and what are the pros and cons of various strategies to embrace public cloud. And we see that especially large enterprises with um, big strategic footprints with massive global organizations are starting to embrace a, a more strategic, a more flexible public cloud strategy where they're not just locked in into one public cloud provider, but are going for multi-cloud, hybrid cloud and edge strategy. And that's that has a very diverse kind of infrastructure footprint. So those three very big trends, one, um, the move towards microservices and services-based architectures, a new way of building applications. Second, the, the scarcity of high quality, deep technical talent in the enterprise and, and the premium placed on that talent. And third, um, the, the progress on the maturity curve of cloud adoption, moving maybe from single cloud provider all in, let's adopt as quickly as possible to something that's more, uh, more thought through, more strategic um, and has more flexibility and, and built into it those three very big trends we feel present a huge opportunity. And what we have seen as we engaged with our colleagues at Docker in, in the concept of acquiring Docker Enterprise and going through the due diligence is a 100% alignment in product direction and, and, and vision. 
Mirantis as a company was all in uh, on Kubernetes and Kubernetes as a service and providing a uh, the best possible consistent developer experience for enterprises with Kubernetes everywhere, Kubernetes on-prem, Kubernetes at the edge, Kubernetes in the public cloud, and all wired together as one fabric that can be made available to developers on demand with a consistent experience. That's the product direction that Mirantis was setting towards, and this is what we've seen uh, launched at KubeCon just two days ago as a public beta, as a preview of what's technically possible. And when we engaged with our friends at Docker, we discovered they were very much heading in the same direction uh, with, with Docker Enterprise. So looking at this, we, we very quickly felt that there are tremendous synergies here and that us acquiring Docker Enterprise and bringing our Kubernetes technology into it, and I'll get uh, into some of the specifics in a moment, will create tremendous value for uh, the joint customers will help us innovate faster and become the, the leader in this space right, in terms of what's technically possible and the value that we can create for our customers. Now, what is the plan forward? Uh, Doc Enterprise Platform uh, will definitely be the core of our container technology moving forward for Mirantis. We're committed to it. The, current roadmap plans for the Doc Enterprise Platform continue. The Barracuda release is on track and we plan to release it uh, um, in, in, in the time frame that we had previously uh, advertised to, uh, to our customers. Now, on top of this, we will layer in our Mirantis Kubernetes technology and there are three specific elements to that. One, uh, multi-cluster management technology, the ability to manage not just one Kubernetes cluster, but a fleet of Kubernetes clusters, which can be on-prem, which can be on public cloud, which can be on the edge, but do it through a single plane of glass with a consistent experience for, for operators and developers. So that's one piece of technology that we will add to the platform. The second piece of technology is the automated updates and automated lifecycle management that we've developed at Mirantis over many, many years with uh, our experience building and running very large cloud infrastructures. And we've heard from many Doc Enterprise customers that this is a pain point and this is very, very valuable for them to be able to have a zero touch kind of as a service experience for running their their Kubernetes clusters. So in other words, not having to hire and retain very difficult find, uh, to find staff in order to be able to manage hundreds or, or, or dozens of Kubernetes clusters uh, as part of their infrastructure. And finally, the third piece that we will add um, from, from our Kubernetes technology is uh, just the more robust set of Kubernetes expertise, enterprise-grade Kubernetes expertise, making the clusters more scalable, more highly available, having more features, having more upstream uh, contributions. Just the bench strength, the Mirantis bench strength in Kubernetes has been uh, significantly larger than, than Docker's. And by us contributing it to the, to the Docker platform, we feel it will really, really move the needle and uh, accelerate a Docker enterprise journey towards, um, towards Kubernetes. So this is uh, what is, um, what is going to happen from the product roadmap standpoint. A few other items that may be very important to, uh, to our customers and to our partners are around support, um, nothing changes in support. The, the Doc Enterprise Support Organization remains intact with the same leadership. If anything, we expect it to become better over time because the Mirantis Support Organization is significantly larger. And we have a lot of um, uh, operations expertise for running very large scale systems. So for example, at at and we support a platform that's deployed over 20,000 physical servers or 
for VW, we run uh, private clouds in several data centers with mission critical SLAs and 24-7 uh, guarantees and so forth. Um, so we have just more bench strength, more expertise, and over time we, we expect that this will benefit the top enterprise support organization as well. One other important remark here is that the product leadership of, or, or the product engineering leadership is unified day one. Uh, the, we've appointed the, as the senior vice president of worldwide product engineering, Melind, who comes from Docker and has played a central role in uh, building the, the Docker enterprise platform. Uh, so all of that will be unified day one and moving towards the direction and strategy that um, I've just shared. So these are the uh, most important uh, highlights of why we did what we did and where we are going with our roadmap and what customers can expect. Maybe a few other items on the legal and commercial side. The um, custom agreements, the contracts remain the same. There's not going to be any change to the terms and conditions. The pricing model remains the same. There's, gonna, there's not going to be any change. So our goal is to make it as easy and as smooth as possible for customers to continue to do business with us and to rely that we will deliver uh, to their expectations and, and even exceed them. Uh, one other note that might be relevant here is Swarm support. We know that Swarm is incredibly important for many Doc Enterprise customers. We also know from our due diligence, I have spoken with many Doc Enterprise customers uh, leading up to, to closing the transaction personally. And I spent quite a bit of time on the topic of Swarm with them. And we know that many Doc Enterprise customers love Swarm because it's very simple very easy to use, very robust, creates a ton of value. And because of that, we've committed to support it and continue to provide enhancements for at least two years, meaning that we can very well extend it if the customer base needs it and, and expands it. Now, we will use the next two years to, to make it even easier for customers to move um, between Swarm and Kubernetes through software tools and training and, and processes. Um, but we will continue to remain flexible and listen to the customer base and listen to the market. We do feel that Kubernetes is winning the orchestration war, war the, the Kubernetes orchestra, the, the uh, container orchestration war, and will become the dominant standard. Uh, so we do feel that a lot of customers are going to move in that direction. But we also understand that customers have made investments, have made commitments, that I don't like disruption. And it's very, very important for them to be able to rely on us to continue to provide Swarm support. So we will continue to do it. So let me stop here and look at a, a good number of questions that have uh, come in over the chat and then we will address them uh, either by myself or together with my colleagues with VJ and um, with VJ and Kent. Most of them are on Swarm to start. Uh, the future of Docker Swarm. So, on. so do, do, uh, Docker Swarm, I believe we already address it. We will continue to provide support for at least two years and we will continue to um, we will continue to do feature enhancements and we will extend it beyond that if the customer base needs it. So let me go now to the list of questions and see uh, where we are. Um, more clarity on the future on Swarm in EE. Um, I don't know, Vijay, do you want to say a few more words about Swarm? I, 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 yes, of course. I I, yeah. I did uh, scan the list for more details on the questions on, on Swarm. So there are a couple of other questions. One, uh, how long will we support it? Adrian addressed that. Uh, what is the future of Swarm? I think it was clear uh, in Adrian's answer. 
there was a question on uh, on the Windows platform itself, which is uh, how do we how do we continue to support Swarm on Windows, um, as well as uh, an upcoming feature which is uh, close to release, which is which is Kubernetes on Windows. Um, and I think it's fair to say that the, the same answer holds for the next. But first of all, the, the Windows platform is something we're getting into at this point, and that's not changing. Um, Kubernetes will be supported on Windows as we go forward. Uh, we also will continue to support the, the, the Swarm feature set on Windows that already uh, exists. Um, there was also a question on any new features in Swarm. What happens to those? We are, uh, it, 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 uh, Kubernetes is certainly winning the, the orchestration war. That doesn't mean we stop, completely stop doing anything new on Swarm. There will be a specific set of features. Uh, it, it won't be tens of them, but there, it will be entirely driven by customer asks. We have a couple of them in our backlog that that we are uh, working through um, and and i think that mirantis is committed to co continuing to support uh, that with us at this point yeah absolutely so let's go uh, continue to the rest of question will the pricing structure be changing and if so when so the answer is no we, we stick with the pricing model that currently exists um another question is it true that docker swarm will no longer support in docker ee no it's not true it is absolutely supported um how does Mirantis plan to make Docker better? Uh, I do have here some specific answers. Um, one is dramatically enhance the level of Kubernetes capabilities um, in, in those directions that I already mentioned. Uh, one is multi-cluster management capability. The other one is continuous updates and upgrades with a zero touch experience. We will also provide a managed service as an option or as a service experience where we will run the systems for customers if they choose not to do it themselves. It, it will be an option. Um, so these are some of the ways in which we plan to make uh, Docker better. Um, how do we contact Docker support? Uh, that's interesting. So Kent, do you want to take that one? Sure. So the contact mechanism today for Docker support does not change. Um, our enterprise portal will still be the inbound. Our phone number uh, does not change either. The uh, mission critical 24 by seven support that our customers expect uh, uh, stays the same as well. Okay, that's very clear. Um, how will the Doc Enterprise resource process change following the acquisition? Um, it will not, we're, we're not changing our business practices. Um, some of these are not so essential. Um, does Mirantis have plans they can discuss regarding the Armada function announced in 2018? Uh, yes, we have plans. I'm not sure that we can discuss that in, in now in a great degree of detail, but what I can tell you is that Armada was one of the things that was most exciting to us to see in the Doc Enterprise product roadmap. And it's very much converging with our vision as to how to provide unique value for customers. I'm going to let uh, Vijay comment more on uh, Armada if he wants to, but we definitely want to develop in that direction. Uh, we, we have, of course, Docker has been uh, actively working on it, and uh, we have a team that's been working on the product set without going into too much details of uh, uh, exactly what was in that first release. Uh, I'd like to say that it was uh, initially a SaaS offering uh, that was coming out. Uh, with the acquisition by Marantis, we are uh, looking at leveraging uh, similar capabilities uh, more on the on-prem side that Marantis has, and we'll, we'll uh, bring those together as we go forward. Um, yeah, there is so many, there are so many complementary pieces between the Marantis stack and the and the Docker stack that it's uh, extremely exciting from from the point of view of customers and partners to see them come together uh, over the next year. And then Armada is a big one in that. Very good. So how and when will Mirantis be reaching out to Docker Enterprise um, Edition Delivery Partners? Um, I should point out that the uh, alliance and partnership team of Docker Enterprise is not changing, so that remains in place and they will continue to work with and reach out to the Docker Enterprise Partners as, as it's been the case in the past and our business practices there will not change. And in fact, what we have done is we've taken the, the Doc Enterprise uh, field leadership with Chris and Keegan 
and they are now part of the senior leadership of Mirantis overall, and the partnership organization fits within their overall field team. So I don't expect there to be um, any changes to the business practices that we've had uh, up to this point. Yeah, uh, in this qu question, will DocaCon be run MirantisCon? Um, that's, I don't know if this is a question about the name or if we're going to have a user conference. We will have a user conference and the, the, the core of that is probably going to come from DocaCon. Um, so stay tuned there, we will announce our plans, but we do feel it's, a, it's very, very important for us to have an event where our most important customers, partners, and users can come together with each other and with us uh, so that we can um, share best practices, um, outline our roadmap, get critical feedback, and just build deeper relationships with our customers and partners, as well as fo foster relationships between the customers and partners themselves. So yes, we will have a user conference and it will build on the on the foundation that uh, DockerCon has has laid. There is one uh, question on UCP and DTR specifically as Docker components. Uh, they are absolutely part of the enterprise uh, platform. And so everything that Adrian said for the Docker enterprise platform it applies to both of those components, which uh, pretty much uh, carry the whole uh, enterprise platform. Uh, there is uh, There are no special caveats to add to that. Okay, very good. What else? Uh, what will happen to Docker E on Windows Server? This is yeah. very important. So can, can you restate that? Because that is just so important. So uh, Windows, uh, Docker, the Docker EE platform currently supports uh, Swarm uh, as the core orchestrator on the Windows platform. Uh, and that will continue, uh, as I said earlier. Um, and uh, we also are working uh, on a Kubernetes offering on Windows. Uh, and that's uh, work actively in progress uh, and then uh, very close to the finish line. So that is something to look forward to, obviously. Uh, so we are uh, certainly making Windows a first class citizen. Do you want to add to that? Yeah. Um, that was also hugely important from our perspective. We felt that the, the, one of the central unique values of Docker Enterprise Platform is that it's truly infrastructure independent and it can run on any of the popular platforms out, uh, uh, out there. And on Windows in particular, it's a, it's a very unique capability that we want to double down on. I also want to point out that we at Mirantis uh, have formed a, a unique partnership with Microsoft that's not heavily publicized just yet, but we have been selected as one of only five globally certified partners to provide services and expertise around uh, Azure Kubernetes service, around AKS. Um, so we do have a deepening and growing relationship with Microsoft. That's going to add to the Docker Enterprise relationship with Microsoft and only make it stronger. This leads maybe also to the next question. Can it manage AKS and EKS clusters? Um, this might be an Armada or- Yeah, it's an, it's, an, it's an Armada and cost que uh, question. Uh, that will be the direction that to, to, to integrate the management of uh, AKS and EKS clusters into an overall container management platform. We can't tell you what, yet when that feature is going to come, but it's definitely on our list of priorities. Let's see, what other questions do we, um, uh, do we have? Uh, there's, a, there's a question about brand, will the Doc Enterprise brand remain? Yes, we will keep the brand for at least 12 months. We have an option to extend it for at least another six months. Um, what I can tell you is that we have a very good relationship with Docker Inc., which is the, the future Docker company. And um, we are about to sign uh, to, to, to develop also a, a mutual support and resale agreement. You can expect us to collaborate upstream in the open source development and you can also ex ex expect us to see us collaborating in the market when serving uh, enterprises. Okay, so question is, um, 
could you expand what you mean by automated updates? Yes, yes. So I don't know if you had an opportunity to go to our website and, and check out Mirantis Kubernetes as a service, but we've had it as our goal for quite some time now, for over a year, this is one of our central R&D goals, which is to automate the updates of the cloud stack that we, we ship to customers, whatever that might be, from, from the bare metal upwards. We feel this is a very, very important part of delivering a, of, 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 deliver, of, of delivering a, um, a, um, a true cloud experience. Um, why are we looking to automate this? One, we want to make the actual operation like patches and upgrades very, very easy. And we know that for some customers, um, uh, upgrades in particular can be difficult and, and disruptive. So we want to remove that pain. But there is another reason that's more strategic and, and very, very important for us. We feel that one of the most important appeals of modern cloud native infrastructure is the ability to consume new features seamlessly. That's actually what the public cloud providers offer that is also so compelling that you can suddenly have a new service or a service with a new feature instantly available to all the users without any disruption and without the users having to do anything about it. And we want to deliver that capability to all of our customers which consume our software, whether it's on-prem or, or in the cloud. Uh, that's very, very important. And you can see a preview of this with Mirantis CAS public better, where Kubernetes clusters can be updated in, in a fully automated fashion. We're super excited about that because it's going to give us higher feature velocity and it's going to make the overall experience for customers uh, much easier. So let's see, what other questions do we have here? Um, Yeah, Kione, what happens to the open source pieces of Docker, Docker Community Edition, Docker Mobi, and so on? So all of the open source pieces of Docker remain open source, and we will continue to contribute to it. And we will partner with the future Docker Inc. to make that happen. But we realize that these are extremely important. There's a huge part of the value that Docker brings to the world, and we will continue to invest in their development. So related, there's a question, is there any impact on Docker CE? I'll, I'll let VJ comment on this. Uh, Docker Community Edition is again a community uh, free offering. Uh, we will be working with uh, Docker, uh, the, the, the future Docker, which is uh, the other company that, 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 manage, that continues to manage CE uh, and, and we'll work with them uh, closely in partnership to keep continuing to do that. Uh, and and so that that will just be something will will play out as will play out as we go forward. Um, it's not an exclusively Mirantis only thing or a Docker only thing at this point. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Vijay. So we have a few other super interesting questions here. Uh, back to Swarm. So I want to just this is super, super important. Um, same statement remains at least two years and we're open to extending it uh, afterwards um, and this has not changed by the way we were clear that it's at least two years it, it can very, very much be more uh, another question are there any plans on integrating docker ee with mirantis managed services um, and the answer is yes we 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 will bring to market a managed service offering or an as a service experience for docker ee uh, we've heard from a number of Docker EE customers that they absolutely want this. They don't want to be in the business of setting up, managing, updating, upgrading uh, Docker enterprise clusters, and we'll be very happy to do that for them. And we have a very deep bench of expertise as well as tooling available uh, to do this. We, we're very good at this. And it, But it will always be an option for customers. There is not going to be a mandate that the customers must do it. Um, let me see, uh, any other questions that we have here? Will you plan to migrate Docker Enterprise Platform for your own platform only you're required to scale using your ecosystem? 
Yeah, I don't quite understand this question, so we'll probably skip it. The Doc Enterprise Platform is a is a complete product, end-to-end -end product, and it will be the core of the Mirantis container platform. It is the core, and it will continue as such in the future. Will Doc Enterprise be available as a service? Uh, Yes, the answer is yes, and this connects very much to the managed services question. Yes, Doc Enterprise Platform as an option will be available as a turnkey service with guaranteed SLA and with customers not having to set up, configure, manage, update and upgrade the platform at all. It will be delivered to them as a service globally and that is on any infrastructure, on on-prem infrastructure, on public clouds, on the edge, everywhere. There was a specific question on Windows uh, 2016 while well, Edwin, you should keep going yeah. ahead, looking ahead. Uh, let me answer that 2016 question. Uh, it's a bit of a double-edged question. Uh, Microsoft itself is very, uh, very cagey about support of container capabilities on Windows 2016. Uh, especially down in the networking stack. We have been encouraging our customers to move towards 2019, uh, which is a more robust platform for, uh, especially for networking support on the, uh, for, for containers. Uh, given this, uh, we will, uh, the few customers that we have on 2016, we of course commit to supporting, but we would uh, like to see the move to 2019 happen sooner than later. Um, Menantis hasn't changed, this has been a, a standard, uh, concern or issue with the, right from the uh, uh, Docker enterprise days. Uh, so that's the statement on that. We'll, we'll, we'll look at specific cases with uh, people running on 2016 uh, individually, but there are scale limitations. All right, very good. Thank you, Vijay. Not a very important question. What about licensing contracts? Should we sign amendments or specific new contracts with Mirantis? What will be the next steps legally? Um, couple of um, important um, items there. One, all the contracts that are existing in place, we have completely inherited as Miranti. So whatever contract existed with, with Docker, that is, that's part for Docker Enterprise, it can be a partner contract, it can be a um, customer contract, it can be a supplier contract, all of those contracts we have inherited one-to-one -one and they are fully um, in effect legally. So there is nothing for customers or partners or suppliers that they need to do to um, amend those contracts or, or make any changes. They are in full force and effect. Now, moving forward, new contracts that we sign will also be the same Docker Enterprise contracts. It's just that Docker Inc. will be replaced with Mirantis Inc., but the terms and conditions will be the same. Our goal here has been to minimize disruption and make it as easy as possible for people to continue to do business with us. So re related to that, um, there, um, this is an important one. The pricing model uh, is based on CPU, right? Um, well, it's actually based on cores, and I will let Vijay and Kent comment on it. Kent, can you take that? Yeah, absolutely. So the the way our pricing today is, is as Adrian said, it's done by cores. Um, as we, uh, this is a newer pricing model, and so as we uh, go through uh, renewal activities with customers, you know, we look at the existing pricing model when it was done off number of nodes. You know, we want to make sure that as we move to core-based pricing, that we're able to keep our customers whole. What we see uh, with core-based is that, uh, you know, we have the ability to actually um, scale uh, enterprise cluster uh, in a manner that is incredibly beneficial uh, and allows for a more, uh, more accurate pricing structure based on what customers are, are doing with the technology. Thank you, Kent. And yes, we will not change that. Um, Doc Enterprise made the change to a core-based pricing model quite some time ago, and we felt it's the right change, and we're moving forward with it. We continue it. Okay, uh, we have quite a few more super interesting questions here. 
Um, one is 54. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the zero touch as a service experience to eliminate the administration integration operation burden for customers capability announced in, in my blog? Yes, I mean it comes back to it comes back to the comment I made a few minutes ago. We believe that some enterprises, maybe even many enterprises, will not want to be in the business of actually running um, infrastructure or running or operating infrastructure services. They will want to be very much focused on software development, building um, unique value that, that makes a difference for the business. And we also see that many enterprises are struggling to, to retain technical talent, especially technical ta talent with deep cloud native expertise. So with that in mind, it's been our direction at Mirantis for quite some time to deliver to customers a true as a service cloud experience that zero, zero touch where the actual operation of the platform, the updating, upgrading of the platform, configuration of the platform, is something that the customer does not have to worry about. It just comes as part of the service experience. Now, there are two levels to this. One level is where this, where this, um, as, uh, where this, as a, where, where this as a service experience is very much delivered mostly by people with some tooling underneath. And this will be the first step that we will offer for the Docker Enterprise Platform, a turnkey managed service um, to guarantee the SLA and, and cover all the, all the work that I just described. The next level up is going to be an as a service experience that's delivered purely by software, where yes, there will be some SREs in the background, but really the system, the infrastructure operates itself. Updates happen automatically, upgrades happen automatically, and any operation uh, configuration, reconfiguration on changes happen by themselves. To, you can imagine it almost like an autopilot experience. And you can see some of that already in the public beta of Mirantis Kubernetes as a service where this auto update auto upgrade experience is really delivered by software not by humans and that's the direction that we're also going to take the docker enterprise platform into from the operations experience point of view okay uh, there are a few more other interesting uh, uh, questions uh, here um, what will happen with Docker Hub? Yes, I can imagine why many people care about this. So Docker Hub is part, continues to be part of uh, Docker Inc. And we have a partnership agreement with Docker Inc. So Docker, for example, we will continue to be able to issue and manage uh, enterprise license keys through the Docker Hub. Uh, that's very much part of the agreement. So there's going to be no disruption there. In addition, I very much expect that Mirantis and, and Doc Enterprise and, and Armada, as it continues forward, will have some integration with Docker Hub. The relationship between the two companies is extremely good. We see each other as the most strategic partners for each other, and I expect us to have a lot of collaboration um, moving forward, including around Docker Hub. Another important question is what happens to Docker partners? Um, and no changes there. So we've inherited all the Docker partnerships, Docker enterprise partnerships, and we wanted to keep and, and nurture them. So there, there are not gonna be any changes because of the acquisition. Now, like with any business relationship, all business relationships evolve. So it's very possible that in 18 months from now or two years from now, We'll have some new partnerships and some existing partnerships will move in a different direction, but it will have nothing to do with Mirantis acquiring the uh, Doc Enterprise business. I think Kent was looking at one question on uh, supporting in disconnected environments. Kent, you want to 
Yeah. Did state that and take it. Yeah. Well, we've got, there are there are two two public sector related questions uh, that we can put together. One is um, that uh, how how going forward are we going to work with the U.S. public sector? And the other one is will we continue to offer support for disconnected environments? So uh, from an enterprise perspective, our public sector team is in, is the the same team, right? We're uh, from a uh, sales and solutions engineering role, those uh, folks are over at Marantis with us. Um, from a enterprise technical support perspective, you know we have uh, several of us in the organization who have deep backgrounds in public sector, and we understand the unique challenges with working with vendors from those environments, and we will continue uh, to work to provide a uh, level of service that is acceptable in those environments working through those challenges. So that leads into disconnected. A disconnected install is a, a key tenant of the Docker Enterprise platform. It's one that we have been uh, improving on with each release and we will continue to do so um, for uh, financial institutions, for government entities and similar entities that have that level of security requirements we will make sure that uh, we have a platform that we continue to improve on that experience uh, from the technical pieces, from the documentation on how to do it, and then from the support that we can provide to customers with those unique requirements. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Kent. There are a few other super interesting questions here that uh, we should answer. Um, Let, let me take this one for a moment. Um, so the question is, will UCP and DTR continue as a management layer within a Doc Enterprise Edition and, and or, or will it be something new uh, from Mirantis? And the answer is yes, DTR and UCP are critical, critical components of the overall Doc Enterprise platform and they will very much continue. Uh, to be part of that. Then there was another um, question that's very interesting. Um, why run Kubernetes on Docker? It's not necessary. Um, we'll gladly address this. You're absolutely right. You can run Kubernetes on uh, directly on with container D um, in a variety of configurations, and you can roll you can roll Kubernetes uh, on your own. It's just you just can take the upstream and stitch everything together and see if you can build an enterprise container platform out of it. Um, we believe that for the vast majority of customers, that's going to be extremely difficult to do well and extremely difficult to maintain. And it will also miss some very, very important unique features and capabilities that are part of the Docker enterprise platform. So one example is DTR, the Docker Trusted Registry that allows people to manage the entire workflow of uh, development and moving into production, moving containers into production and to do it uh, with security in our back and to do it across at, at enterprise scale, right? With hundreds or thousands of developers in various geographies, that's definitely a unique capability. Then if you're looking at the ability to run on, on wind, Windows, the you know, Windows platform that's quite unique for, for Docker. And then finally, uh, if you think about uh, security, um, that's also quite a unique capability that Docker Enterprise brings to the table. And last but not least, all of this needs to be wired together into a something that's a product that works together well, that has integrations between all the layers, that has integrations with third-party systems that can be updated, can be upgraded, can be managed, and that is just very, very difficult to do if you're going to build from scratch your own Kubernetes stack. That's that's our point of view. Let's see. Um, what will happen to Docker security? That's a very interesting one. So Vijay and Kent, do you, do you want to um, comment on that? Uh, it's a pretty general question. I, I think Kent addressed some of the uh, disconnected environments and federal accounts and uh, all of that. We continue to uh, support all, uh, continue to patch and keep the system updated, uh, especially with the Kubernetes CVEs, as well as for the uh, core platform itself. 
Uh, security is obviously a key consideration. We have uh, especially a team on that uh, exclusively set aside to, to handle security within our engineering team. That team comes forward into Marantis. Uh, so other than the existing continued commitment to security and, and if anything, are uh, doubling down on that in, in the Marantis uh, organization, I don't uh, have more to add to that. All right, very good. Um, I do want to point out that security is a very important topic for Mirantis as well. I don't know how many Docker enterprise customers know Mirantis or have direct experience with us. We don't do we, we do not have as many customers at Docker Enterprise, but we have very very large customers, and we run very mission critical environments uh, for them. Uh, we have many customers with very high expectations for security. Uh, there is going to be a very good synergy between Docker Enterprise and Mirantis when it comes to security uh, for, uh, for sensitive workloads. There are some other very interesting questions here. Uh, yes, there was one question about professional services. Um, let me take that one. Um, the, and the question was, uh, how is the post-sales experience going to be different now for Docker Enterprise customers uh, now that they are, they are part of Mirantis? Uh, will the Mirantis professional services start to deliver the, uh, the install and configuration for Docker Enterprise platform? And the answer to that is initially there's not going to be any change. And in fact, the professional services team for Docker Enterprise we have uh, inherited and we have gladly taken over as part of Mirantis. They are now in a new configuration coming even closer to the field. So the, the, the doc enterprise professional services will be very closely aligned with the solution engineers and with the account executives under the same leadership of the worldwide field organization of doc enterprise, which, um, which is Chris and Keegan coming from Docker. So we expect that connection between customers, their expectations and professional services and the pre-sale solution engineers to become even tighter. Um, so nothing is going to change there. Um, the same solution engineers that you've had so far will continue to do the, the, the deployment and, and, and delivery. Now behind that, there is a, a much larger um, professional service organization that Mirantis has now that will start bringing to bear and see how we can create value. But that's going to be a kind of a, a gradual process. And I expect that some of the areas where we're going to be able to provide value will be um, maybe less around the initial deployment and configuration, but maybe around ongoing uh, configuration updates, upgrades, and, and related support services that lowers the burden of operation for customers who have Docker, uh, Docker EE. Okay, uh, some other very interesting questions, different questions. Customers that are buying Docker EE, should they have MCP in the package or they should add other subscriptions? And um, it's interesting, this question came up today in an internal call um, as well. Uh, and, the, and the answer is no, there is no requirement uh, if you want to buy a Docker Enterprise Edition to have a Mirantis Cloud Platform attached to it or underneath. Um, they serve uh, dif different use cases and, and different needs. Uh, Docker EE is a multi-cloud container platform that's very much aimed at making the process of software development and delivery on containers dramatically easier on any infrastructure anywhere. Um, Mirantis Cloud Platform is directed at data center consolidation. So if you want, if you want to run large scale data centers on prem and you want to have a true AWS type of experience and you don't want to use um, proprietary and super expensive software like VMware, then the Mirantis Cloud Platform is perfect for you. And that's the, that's, the, the, that's the core use case. And it's very much about virtualization, storage as a service, network as a service, bare metal as a service, but not, not containers as a service. And, and there is no mandatory linkage. Now there are synergies, but there is no mandatory linkage. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Um, I 
think I'm looking down at the lower list here. There's a question, yeah. Docker application designer, uh, that stays with uh, the Docker desktop side. Um, that's not a product that's coming forward into the Atlantis acquisition. It was a consumer targeted uh, desktop product. Okay, there's a very technical question here. That's a good one. Um, will you keep Tigera Calico as the default and preferred CNI for Docker EE? So um, you're probably that's in correct. this position. Yes, uh, we are. Uh, the Tigera relationship continues and Calico comes out as the, uh, uh, it continues to be the CNI platform for uh, the enterprise platform. Yeah. Another question, and I know we answered a similar question before, but this is so important, it's it's worth repeating. Uh, what about MSA agreements that we had with Docker? The MSA agreements are in full force and effect, and there is no need to redo them. Um, they, they've just come with the acquisition, and we will absolutely uh, honor them. Okay, for customers who are on Docker E now and want to move over to Kubernetes in the next six months, will there be Mirantis Kubernetes or Docker E uh, Kubernetes that currently exists? The easiest path, if you are on Docker EE now and you want to move to Kubernetes, is just use Docker Kubernetes service as part of uh, Docker EE. And the Docker Kubernetes service as part of Docker EE will over time get all the features and capabilities uh, of the Mirandis Kubernetes expertise. So what we talked before about automated updates, multi-cluster management, um, the as a service experience, you are, you are going to be able to get that through the Docker Enterprise Edition. And that's the easiest path for you. Um, Let's see what else. I see a question on APIs for ordering and provisioning. I assume this is for Kubernetes provisioning. Um, everything we do is APIs first. Both companies have the same philosophy. So uh, as the features come out, they will be API addressable, yes. Another very interesting question. Will Mirantis offer similar service for modernizing traditional apps? So the MTA program, it's part of Docker Enterprise. It's part of the acquisition and has come over to Mirantis wholesale. And it will continue. We may make it more scalable. Uh, we, we kind of in the early days of that. Um, but yeah, we totally understand the value of modernizing traditional apps and, and the related program that Docker has built. And it's part of the acquisition and it's part of Mirantis now. Let's see what else. Adrian, there are a couple of questions around uh, compatibility items. Um, so as our input for Docker Enterprise support has not changed, neither have our canonical documentation uh, on these items. So success.docker.com is still the source of authority. So our compatibility matrix that shows the items that uh, are compatible with the various features of the product, uh, that is still our source of authority and will continue to be updated. Very good. Thank you so much for clarifying. So we're almost towards the end of the hour. Let's see if there are a few other questions here for us to um, for us to answer. So AD is interesting. So do you offer preview of the Mirantis Docker E functionality? Um, well, one way to get a preview of our Kubernetes capabilities is just uh, take a look at the public beta of Mirantis Kubernetes as a service. That will give you a very good view of uh, where the Kubernetes capability of Docker Enterprise will be going as well. One of seven is an interesting one. One of seven is an interesting one. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's a very interesting one. You're right. We'll uh, read it out. Yeah, where, where where do you see the market for Kubernetes as a service going? Is it not inevitable that the cloud providers will move up the stack in a Mirantis space? Well, of course, the cloud providers will offer and already offer today Kubernetes as a service capabilities. Uh, you're absolutely right. How is a Doc Enterprise and how is Mirantis together with Doc Enterprise different? And why do we feel we have a business? And there, there are a couple of um, important aspects to this. One is we offer a truly infrastructure independent product. 
So you can run your uh, Kubernetes apps uh, on any infrastructure anywhere. It, it can be on AWS, it can be on Azure, it can be on-prem, it can be on the edge or anywhere in between. And you can do it with a consistent experience. And this is the key part. You can do it with a consistent experience for your developers. So you can write your app once and it can, it can run anywhere. Uh, that's something that the cloud providers cannot do. Um, so that's one, one piece of uh, unique uh, value. The other piece of, um, there are a few other pieces of unique value, like the developer experience itself. Docker um, created, uh, I think, arguably the simplest, best, most popular developer experience out there. It's connection between the Docker desktop and Docker enterprise. And that very much comes as part of the package for, uh, for Docker Enterprise. And we will continue to double down on that. We, we want to continue to offer the best possible experience for developers, make it as easy as possible for them to build apps and then share apps and deploy apps on top of the platform, which run anywhere. And then finally, there are some other pieces of unique value, like for example, the Docker Trusted Registry, which many customers are using on a, a very large scale globally. And, and, and it's become for many of these customers, the easiest and the, the default way by which they, uh, they create containers, they sign containers, they promote containers, they manage containers and the related software development artifacts throughout their enterprise. And um, that is quite powerful. So we feel we very much have a place for companies who don't want to be locked in into just one particular cloud provider service, but want to be infrastructure independent and focus on providing the best possible yet consistent experience to their developers. Okay, very good. So perhaps this is a, a good question to end on. Thank you very much for joining. Please um, feel free to email us um, and continue to ask your questions. Um, the support interface has not changed. The account executive sales interface has not changed. But if you have any questions, just email us directly and we'll respond promptly. Our goal is to make it as easy as possible for you to continue to do business with us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.